Uh, yeah. Uh, family, y'all. Just keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go, here we go. Uh. How is John different from the synoptic gospel? Now, are there any ways in which John is different? We can tick through the differences. First of all, in the Gospel of John, Jesus is conscious of having existed with God before coming into the world. Think about those words. In John, Jesus knew that he was with God before Jesus came down here. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus doesn't say anything about existing before he existed. Follow me? Jesus' life was, Jesus lived his life. He doesn't talk about a life before this life. What does John talk about? In the Gospel of John, Jesus is aware of existing before he existed. He says, chapter 17, verse 5, Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. This is high Christology. Before the world began, Christ, Jesus, enjoyed glory with the Father. Jesus is saying, before the world was created, I was with you, God. Whoa! Have you heard that before in Matthew, Mark, or Luke? That's totally new. That Jesus is like aware of having existed before he was born. Another way in which John is different, Jesus' ministry is largely set in Jerusalem, not in Galilee. In the synoptics, Jesus is in the north, in Galilee, and then finally in the end, he comes down to Jerusalem, where he's crucified. Do you remember the, the Gospel of Luke is all about this journey of Jesus and setting his face toward Jerusalem, and the whole Gospel is about him journeying to Jerusalem, where he's going to die. Not so in the Gospel of John. In, in the Gospel of Luke, toward the end, Jesus comes riding in on a donkey, and people say, Hail to the Messiah, and all, and he, he overturns the... the Money changers, tables, things like that, and he's killed. Gospel of John, right out of the gate, chapter 2, right out of the gate, Jesus is in, in Jerusalem overturning the, the money changers' table, and he's doing his ministry in Jerusalem. Another difference, remember back at the Gospel of Matthew, we talked about this in our course in Christology, there's all sorts of talk about the kingdom of God, or the reign of God, or the reigning God. How much of that does John talk about? Matthew, the kingdom of God is like a, a mustard seed that you plant. Okay, that's beautiful, Matthew. How much does John talk about the kingdom of God? John mentions the kingdom of God in two verses. Another difference, in Matthew and in these other Gospels, we have Jesus talking in parables, especially in Matthew. Lots of parables. How many parables do we have in John? No. In John, Jesus speaks in long discourses. And when we say long discourses, we mean long discourses. How interesting, we talked about the demonic possessions or diabolic possessions. Back then, when people acted a little strange, and let's just be honest today, that there's still some people who act a little strange in this world. If you don't believe me, go down to 6th Street sometime. <laughs> right? There are all sorts of people in our society. Many of them are more marginalized. Maybe many of them are without homes because their, their conditions are such that, you know, we sometimes look at them and they're talking to themselves or saying things that don't make a lot of sense. We have words for that today. Back then, before we had words for that, we just figured that any illness must be because of sin or because of demonic possession, so these people must be possessed. And so, in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we have all sorts of stories of Jesus casting out demons how many stories do we have in John of Jesus casting out demons? None. How interesting, if we were to write a story today, would we write a story of someone casting demons out of another person? Matthew, Mark, and Luke obviously believed in diabolical possession and demonic possession. John doesn't give us any indication of that. Another difference, John's Jesus, the Johannine Jesus, doesn't go on performing miracle after miracle like Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Oh my gosh, it's just a miracle machine. Miracle after miracle after miracle. Gospel of John, I'm going to give you seven. I'm going to give you seven miracles to show you that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. That's all I'm giving you. Seven signs. 
Another difference, Jesus performs miracles in John that we don't see in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. What are some of those miracles that we don't see in Matthew, Mark, and Luke? Changing water to wine. You find water to wine in Matthew, Mark, or Luke? Where are you going to find that? Only in John. John is the only one who has the story of changing water to wine. What about the, the healing of a man born blind? There are other gospel stories that talk about healing blind people. But can you bring sight to a person who's never seen in his or her entire life? He's born blind. He's born blind. He's always been blind. The gospel of John is the only one who talks about giving sight to a man born blind. And then finally, Lazarus. Why is raising Lazarus from the dead different from other stories? We heard about the widow's son in another gospel. Okay, the people were crying because he just died. Okay, it's, or, or the, the little girl who died when Jesus came and raised her up. She just died. Okay, today we have people who have a heart attack. The heart stops. The brain is not dead yet. The heart stops, though, and we bring them back to life. You can do that. Jesus steps in and brings a person who just died back to life. Okay, yeah, maybe Jesus had, a, had some paddles there and <laughs> under his cloak. He pulled out the paddles. <laughs> Clear! <laughs> He brought him back to life. Whatever happened in that story is <laughs> But that's different from the story of Lazarus. In the story of Lazarus, when you've been in the tomb for four days, I got news for you. You're dead. <laughs> Seriously, now. You can bring the paddles. Clear. There's no, there's no bringing that body that's been dead for four days back to life, which is why John is so unique. Because it's almost like they went to show that, that Lazarus is dead, dead. He's dead as a doornail, dead. Right? He's not just, he didn't just die and we're going to bring him back. We're going to, let's get out the paddles and bring him back. No, he's been dead. And people who've been dead like that don't come back to life. What did Jesus do? One of the signs. He brought him back to life. And then uh, one final peculiarity of John. Interestingly, so when we take a look at who influenced whom, we know that Mark influenced Matthew and Luke. And so some 60% of Matthew and Luke's passion narratives, the story of Jesus' suffering and death, about 60% of their story is also in Mark. John takes very little from them. So how it is that John has maybe, according to Raymond Brown, he has 15.5%. Don't ask me how they did the math. But he has 15.5% 15 of Mark's narrative in John's passion narrative. Some very big differences. We talked about the high and the low Christology. John is very high Christology, where Jesus is God. So when the soldiers come to arrest him, he, said, he says, Who are you looking for? I mean, this is very much a person who's in control. Who are you looking for? We're looking for Jesus. I am he. And suddenly all the soldiers shudder. Oh my God, it's him. Do we have that in, a, in any of the other Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Lee? No. We have a human Jesus who is caught in the same way that any of the rest of us would have been caught by those soldiers. Only in the Gospel of John does Jesus instill fear in those soldiers. It's just, uh, you know, Hollywood, the way you see things. It's now, going back to the movies that I've seen, I can say now where each movie is taking different parts from different books. They just didn't go from one... They just didn't do it by Matthew Luke or Ringo. They just did it by everything else. It's Hollywood, he says. We all, we all remember the, the movie, Mel Gibson's mm -hmm. The Passion of the Christ. What's fascinating about movies like that is because we're taking a story that's found in four different sources. It's a story in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if we go through that movie, scene by scene, we can see what he takes from each gospel. Okay, how does Jesus respond to the soldiers? Okay, that tells us where he took that scene. Right? What does Jesus say as he's dying on the cross? Okay, that to, I mean, we can see how it is that there are different, all of these authors have different scenes. How it is that Matthew and Mark have a night trial with Cephas? Luke doesn't have a night trial, and neither does John. So watch the movie again, The Passion of the Christ. If it has a night trial, where does that night trial come from? It comes from these two stories. So it's interesting seeing the differences there's one, I don't know the name of the titles, but when you just said about the soldier, in one movie, he gives up. 
He just says, just like a normal person would be a qualified soldier. In another movie, he does stand tall and say, I am he, what do you want with me? You know, I will do this to you, you know, if you take me in. It's just... In theaters, in theaters now is a story about Moses. What is the name of that movie? There's a movie out in theaters Exodus. right now. Exodus. Is it called Exodus? So there's this one story, but it's it's this movie is based on only one story, which is from Exodus. Imagine if there were four different books in the Bible that told the Exodus story, all with different facts. Then that would sort of be what we have in the gospel. In the gospel, we have four different stories. All telling us different things about Jesus and different things about God and different things about us. 